Hi learners! Once again, I am Mom Sharness, your English 5 teacher, and welcome to our English class. This is the first lesson of our second quarter in English 5. And the lesson that we will be discussing today is about verbs, specifically the tenses and the aspects of the verb. First, let's have a review about what is verb. Verb is a word or combination of words that indicates action or state of being or condition. Ibig sabihin, ito ay ang mga salitang nagpapakita ng kilos o galaw. Maari din ito ay nagpapakita ng isang kondisyon, ng isang bagay or ng isang pangyayari. A verb is the part of a sentence that tells us what the subject performs. Ito ang nagsasabi din sa atin kung ano ba ang ginagawa ng subject o ano ba ang ginagawa ng pinag-uusapan sa pangungusap. Let's look at the examples. Pedro walks in the morning. The subject is Pedro because he is the one doing the action. And the verb here is the word walks. This is an action word. Mike is going to school. The verb is is going. Amy does not like to walk. The verb is does not. Alice is a good girl. The verb is the word is. Now, there are different kinds of verb, not just the action word. We have the action words, linking verbs, and the auxiliary verbs. Let's first talk about the action words. This is the verb that we all know. These are the words that expresses actions or movement, like running or run, dancing, jump, sing, fly, walk, drive, jump, leave, cook, attend, any action that we can do or they can do. This is also known as the main verb. Next, we have the linking verb. Linking verb is a verb that connects the subject with an adjective or a noun that describes it. It also called be verbs. So, linking verbs are the be verbs. And ano ano ba yung mga be verbs? We have am, is, are, was, where. In short, ang linking verb ay nagduduktong or nasa gitna, nagkoconnect kay subject. At kay adjective or kay noun, like this one, I am a singer. The word am is a be verb. This is the linking verb. Am connects the subject I with the noun singer. Next, she became angry. The word became is our linking verb because it connects the subject she to our adjective angry. Ami turned red. The subject Ami is connected by our linking verb turned to the adjective red. We called it linking verbs. Now, the be verbs are not the only words that can function as linking verb. So there are words, other words that can function as linking verb. Remember kids, ito ay matatawag nating linking verb basta ginamit natin siya as connector ng ating subject sa noun or adjective. Nasa gitna lang siya ni subject at ni noun or ni adjective. Next, we have the auxiliary verbs or the helping verbs. These are the verbs used together with the main verb of the sentence to express the action. The main helping verbs uh, can also be the V-verbs, the am, is, was, where. And we have the auxiliary verbs do, did, have, has, had. Ang function ni auxiliary verb ay mag-act as the helping verb sa ating main verb. Ang helping verb ay makikita sa before or sa unahan ng ating action word. Eaten. Ano ang nasa unahan ng action word na eaten? Have. Therefore, ito ay ating 
auxiliary verb or helping verb. Another one, they are working. Ang ating action word is working. Ang nasa unahan nito na verb ay the word are. This function here in this sentence, it functions as an auxiliary verb or helping verb. Next, we have question. It's not a statement but it's a question. Kaya nasa unahan siya. Nasa unahan ng ating auxiliary verb. Pero, we still use it as a helping verb sa ating action word na drink. Do is the helping verb and drink is the main verb. Next, let's talk about the verb tenses and aspects. Tenses of the verbs indicates the time of event or when did the action happens. Ito ang nagsasabi kung kailan ginawa, ginagawa, or gagawin ang kilos. Sinasabi nito kung ang kilos or ang action ay nagawa na sa past o nakaraan, sa present o sa kasalukuyan, at sa future or sa hinaharap. While the aspects refers to the state of action of a verb and indicates the duration or completion of an event. As aspects makes the tenses more specific. We have 12 tenses or aspects of the verb. First is the simple present tense. It expresses a habit or often repeated actions. Adverbs of frequency such as often, seldom, sometimes, never, and others are used with this tense. So, sa simple present tense, kadalasan, ito ay ginagamit natin para ipakita yung isang uh, kilos na usually mong ginagawa or normally mo nang ginagawa. Like, for example, she goes to work every day. It is in the form of simple present tense. Dahil ito ay kadalasan niya ng ginagawa. Or it expresses a habit or repeated actions. Dahil paulit-ulit, lagi siyang nagpupunta sa trabaho. Next, they always eat lunch together. It indicates a habitual action. Gumamit din tayo ng word na always para ipakita talaga yung habitual action. And ang pattern para malaman mo na ito ay nasa simple present tense, we have the pattern of the verb, the base form of the verb, or the S form of the verb. Ating balikan yung naging lesson natin na lang noong subject and verb agreement, kung kailan ba natin dapat gamitin ang base form at ang S form of the verb. Simple present tense also expresses general truths or facts that are timeless. Like this one, true information. Like, the weather gets cold in December. It is timeless, right? Because it states a fact, true information. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Dito, ang ating verb ay gets and boils. Gets is in S form. Bakit nga ulit naging S form? Kasi ang ating subject ay nag iisa Kailan lang tayo ulit gagamit ng base form, kids? Kapag ang subject natin ay plural. Ayan. Since it express a facts or a true information, uh, timeless siya or hindi siya nagpapakita ng past, present, or future tense. Next, we have the present progressive tense or aspect. This tense is used to describe an ongoing action at this moment, today, or this year. Ibig sabihin, ang present progressive ay ginagawa sa kasalukuyan. She is typing a paper for her class. Kailan niya ito ginagawa? Ngayon. Ngayong oras na ito. Aling Sonia can't leave. She is cooking right now. Kailan siya nagluluto? Ngayon, sa oras na ito mismo. It expresses present progressive tense. Ano ang pattern ng present progressive tense? Gumagamit na tayo ng be verbs na am, is, or are. Depende sa ating subject. 
And then, yung ating verb from the word type, ginawa natin ing form. Ginawa lang nating typing. She is typing. Bakit is? Bakit hindi are? Kasi ang subject ay isa. Again, ito ay pinag-aralan na natin yung subject verb agreement. Kung medyo nakakalimutan, pwedeng balikan yung lesson na yun. Next, she is cooking. Kung mapapansin nyo, we use the be verb is. And then, yung cook, nilagyan natin ng ing. That is the pattern of present progressive tense. And also kids, um, sa ibang lesson or sa ibang video lessons, we also called it as continuous. Present continuous. Okay? And present progressive can also be used to describe an action that is occurring in the present but is temporary or maaring hindi permanenting ginagawa. Like here, John is living in Modesto but he might move soon. O yan. Pwede rin siyang, basta kasalukuyan yung ginagawa. Pero kung temporary lang yung kilos, pwede rin siyang giging living. Next is the present perfect tense. The present perfect is used to talk about an event that began in the past and continues up to the present. Ang pattern niya, has or have, plus the past participle of the verb. I will provide you a uh, sample ng form ng past participle of the verb. So ito, kung makikita nyo dito, again, ang present perfect ay ginagamit natin para pag-usapan yung isang kilos na ginawa niya na noon sa, na- sa past at kasalukuyan pa rin niyang ginagawa sa present. He has lived in Manila for two years. Ibig sabihin, sa ay tumira na sa Manila nung nakaraan pang dalawang taon. Pero, kasalukuyan, hanggang ngayon, ay dun pa rin siya nakatira. So, the action happens in the past up to now or up to present. And the present perfect tense is also used to talk about an event that was completed in the past but the specific time of the event is not important. Yan. Kung di naman importante kung kailan ba nangyayari. Yan. So, yun din yung isa sa mga function ng present perfect tense. I have seen that movie before. Berta has just baked cookies. Yan. So, walang specific na date or time na binabanggit. Again, the pattern is has or have plus the past participle of the verb. Bakit have ulit grade 5? Kasi ang subject natin na you and I always takes the plural form of the verb. Bakit has dito? Because the subject Berta is singular. So it takes the singular form of the verb. Next is the present perfect progressive tense. It expresses an action in progress that is not yet completed or a situation or habit that began in the past and that continues up to the present. Ito yung bagay or action na ginawa mo na nung nakaraan, ngunit hindi pa rin natatapos hanggang ngayon. Example, he has been studying grammar for an hour. She has been cooking all day. So as you can see, pwede mo siyang gamitin sa mga actions na ganun. Yung mga bagay na ginawa mo nung past na hanggang ngayon ay ginagawa mo pa rin at hindi pa rin tapos. The pattern is has or have plus been plus the ing form of the verb. Same pattern, we take has if the subject is singular and we will take have if the subject is plural, except for the subjects you and I. Present perfect progressive tense is also used to describe events that have been in progress recently and are rather temporary. Yun. So, maaari mo rin gamitin ang present perfect progressive tense kung ito ay ginawa mo na rin from the past at hanggang ngayon ginagawa mo pa pero temporary lang. She has been living in Manila for the last two months, but she plans to move soon. 
Now, let's proceed to the past tense. These are the aspects. The simple past. We use the simple past to indicate exactly when an action or event took place in the past. Tandaan nyo, lahat ng mga simple tense, yung pinakasimple sa lahat. Basta't nag-indicate ito ng action kung ito yung nangyari sa past, present, or future. In this case, we have the simple past. It simply tells the action that happens in the past. Example, I visited my sister yesterday. The word visited is in past tense. Tandaan nyo, grade 5, kung may makikita kayo na ED, IED, or D sa dulo, ibig sabihin ito ay isang regular verb. Pero kung ito ay totally binago mo or niretain mo yung word, maaring ito ang kanyang irregular form of the verb. The simple past is used to describe an action or event that are now completed and no longer true in the present. So this is the pattern. Like what I said earlier. Example again, I attended the mass last Sunday. The verb is attended. It is regular form of the verb and naka-attend na siya ng misa nung nakaraang linggo. Ibig sabihin, tapos na. I saw a movie every weekend when I was a teenager. So hindi niya na to nagagawa kasi binanggit dito. Ginagawa niya lang ito nung siya ay teenager pa. Next is the past progressive. Past progressive is used to talk about an activity that was in progress at a specific point of time in the past. The emphasis is on the duration of the activity in the past. Kung makikita niyo dito, grade 5, pansin niyo mabuti. Past progressive, ah, tingnan niyo, yung kilos or yung activity ay in progressive form pero nung nakaraan pa. I will, uh, let me give you an example. I was studying for an exam while my mother was cooking dinner. So, ito ay ginagawa in progressive form, pero ito ay nangyari na. Okay? Next, we were walking in the park around 7 p.m. last night. Again, it's in progressive form. It's in continuing action, pero nakatapos na kasi binanggit rin dito na kailan ginawa yung action. Last night pa ginawa. The pattern of the past progressive tense is the was or were plus the ing form of the verb. Tandaan grade 5 na kapag progressive, laging may, I, laging may be verbs plus yung ing form of the verb sa dulo. Okay? Ito lang ang titingnan nyo sa be verbs kung ito ba ay past or present. More info about sa past progressive. Past progress. Oh, um, sorry. Past progressive is often used with a simple past to show that one action was in progress when another action is occurred. Ito. Ginagamit din natin ito kapag yung action na ginagawa mo ay may sinundan pang isa pang action. Para mas malinaw, basahin natin yung example. I was walking about when the door. I was taking a bath, rather, when the doorbell rang. Ako ay naliligo nang pumunog ang doorbell. They were eating dinner when the neighbors stopped, for a, stopped by for a visit. Sila ay kumakain ng kanilang hapunan nang bumisita ang kanilang kapitbahay. You see, it indicates the past action that you are doing in progressive form or in continuing action nang biglang may nag-occur na naman, may nag-occur na naman na isa pang action. Next is the past perfect. This tense describes completed event that took place in the past before another past event. Example, the Titanic had received many warnings before it hit the icebergs. So ito yung kung kangina in progressive form or tuloy lang yung action. Dito naman nagawa na nila or natapos yung it is an it is a completed event or action. Okay? Nagawa na yung action or completed na yung isang pangyayari 
nang may biglang mag-occur na panibagong event or action. Example, the Titanic had received many warnings before it hit the iceberg. I had already eaten when my friend stopped by to visit. Nakakain na ako nang dumating ang aking kaibigan, nang bumisita ang aking kaibigan. Past perfect tense, the pattern is had plus the past participle of the verb. Had, and then this is the past participle of the verb. Don't worry, I will also give you the copy of the past participle of the verb. Next is the past perfect progressive. This tense is used to emphasize the duration of an action that was completed before another action or event in the past occurred. The pattern is had plus been plus the ing form of the verb. Example, so ito ay, kung mapapansin nyo, ito rin ay isang uh, action na natapos na bago pa magkaroon ng panibagong action. So, she had been driving around the city for three hours before she finally found the right office. Yan. So, we can use this to emphasize the duration of an action that was completed. Ito, kung makikita nyo, na completed na yung action bago pa magkaroon ng panibagong pangyayari or event. Had been driving, so ito yung completed action. And then, ito naman yung panibagong action or event na naganap or nag-occurred after nung kanyang completed action. Now, let's talk about the simple future tense. Basically, it indicates the action that will occur in the future and it has no connection with the present time. Pattern is will or shall as the base form of the verb. Dito, laging base form of the verb lang. Hindi na kailangan lagyan ng ES or S form. Example, Shane will graduate in June. I shall go home early. Now, kailan ba natin ginagamit ang will or shall? Ang will, this is the typical word that we use, an action that will happen in the future. While the word shall, it is usually we, ginagamit natin to kapag nagpapakita ito ng isang responsibility na kailangan mo talaga, kailangan, mas kailangang mangyari talaga. Kagaya nito, I shall go home early. Kailangan talaga makauwi siya ng maaga. So, let's talk about future tense. Will and be verbs plus going to are often used to describe future actions. Yan. Hindi porket mm, ito ay nasa like this one. Dito muna tayo sa second sentence. Maria is going to go to Mexico next week. So, pag ginamit natin itong be verbs plus going to, kung makikita nyo naman, ina-express nito, mangyayari pa lang po. Maria is going to go to Mexico next week. Si Maria ay pupunta sa Mexico next week. So, kapag may nakita kayo, even though it's in the form of present progressive tense, sa meaning mababasa nyo naman na ito ay mangyayari pa lang. And then, ito, this is in the form na of simple present tense. Thomas or Thomas will graduate in June. Okay? In lang. Dagdag lang. And another dagdag, the simple present and present progressive are also used, ito nga yung sinabi ko, are also used to express future time. These are often used in connection with schedules. Yan, kailan daw natin kadalasan ginagamit ito? Pag may isang schedule. She is meeting a new client, client at 11 o'clock. Even though it's in present progressive or it's in simple present, kailangan i-analyze natin mabuti yung sentence. Since ito ay may schedule na pinapakita, nag-express siya ng future tense. The train leaves at 6 a.m. tomorrow. So, paano, ano yung naging uh, hint natin or clue natin na ito ay future tense? Because there is this phrase at 11 o'clock. There is this phrase 6 a.m. tomorrow. Yun yung clue natin na ito ay magaganap pa lang. 
now? Number 10 is the future progressive tense. This tense is used to describe an event or an action that will occur over a period of time at a specific point in the future. I will be teaching English at 10 a.m. tomorrow. They will be moving their furniture out of the house by the time you arrive tomorrow. So, merong specific time kung kailan sa future niya gagawin yung action. Or kung kailan mag occur yung event na yun. The pattern should be will or shall plus be plus the ing form of the word. Next, let's talk about the future perfect tense. This tense is used to describe an event or an action that will be completed before another event or time in the future. Ito. We will have finished the exam by the time class ends tomorrow. So, pinapakita dito yung future action na kailangan mong gawin bago pa man mag-occur yung isang action ulit or yung isang event. Sa example, kailangan, ito, we will have finished the exam by the time class ends tomorrow. So, it's, in, it's a future action na kailangan mong magawa bago pa man mag-occur yung event na ito, bago pa man daw matapos ang klase. See, the pattern is will or shall plus have plus the past participle of the verb. Dito, sa future perfect tense, laging have ang gagamitin natin regardless sa subject kung ito man ay singular or plural. Next, future, future perfect progressive. This tense describes an action that has been in progress for a duration of time before another event or time in the future. The pattern is will or shall plus have plus been plus the ing form of the verb. Example, by the time he finishes law school, we will have been living in the U.S. for eight years. Okay, so ito yung action in progress. Okay, action in progress. So, and then this is the another event. Tandaan nyo lang grade 5 ang pattern. Will or shall plus have plus been plus the ing form of the verb. That is future perfect progressive tense. So it's a it's an action that has been in progress for a duration of time. So ito. Hanggang sa makatapos daw siya ng pag-aaral sa law school. And then, may panibagong event na nangyari. We will have been living in the U.S. for eight years. Hanggang sa siya makatapos, and then pag nakatapos na, they will have been living in the U.S. for eight years. Again, learners, balikan natin ang pattern kasi ito yung pinaka um, mahalaga para madaling tandaan yung mga aspects and tenses of the verbs. And para madali yung masagutan ang mga learning activities niya. And there you have it. I hope you understand our lesson for today. And you can always go back to the video kung meron kayong hindi pa naintindihan. And the best way to learn it is by looking at the examples. And by answering your activities, I know you will learn from it. So, that is it for today. I hope you enjoy your learnings, your new learning this second quarter. Class dismissed!